Hey guys, Michael here with Primal Edge and Leatherworks. How you doing today? Well, if you saw the last video, you know that I am working on the Celtic Bushcrafter. Kind of a throwback to the old Norse Viking daggers and those types of things. Just, I've always liked that design. Um, and uh, yes, just like the last one, it's not going to be a rat tail tang. It's going to be kind of a hidden tang more than anything else. Uh, there is a slight bevel on it, but um, that's just because uh, of the way I had to install the handle. Um, I'm sitting here. I'm done with the heat treating. That's all finished up and uh, pretty much coming along just fine. Uh, getting ready to polish up the handle here, or the blade here, and uh, then install the handle. And, and you know, we're going to have ourselves a new knife. Of course, I need to put the sheath on, but, you know. And I'm sitting here, you know, grinding away, sanding away, and putting my finish on. And i got to tell you, I am a huge fan of satin finish. Um, love it. I, I, it's definitely by far one of my favorite finishes. And, um, you know, I wanted to kind of share... I don't know what industry started this little secret or that it's even that much of really of a secret, but I hear a lot of people talking and based on what I'm hearing people say, I feel like maybe this is a secret and not a lot of people know. Um, certainly, I haven't heard that many knife makers talk about it, so I don't think this is a knife making secret. And, um, you know, before I go any further, I want to clear one thing up. I'm still new to this whole knife making business. And I don't feel, even though I've gotten a lot of fantastic compliments on my work, and you know, not every one I've ever done is a home run. There's always been little imperfections here and there, and you know, it is the way it is. It's just part of the game of you know custom knife work. But uh, out of all the knives I've made, I think I've had amazing feedback, top to bottom, on on damn near all of them. Maybe. Actually, one that I know of didn't have the best feedback in the world, and that was okay. I, you know, I, I knew it wasn't a perfect knife. Um, it's just the name of the game. But I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, fit and finish on a knife, and I hear arguments. People like a satin finish. People like a, a, a high gloss mirror finish. And it really, you know, it is preference. Um, it, you know, it's, it's aesthetically, it's your preference. But um, one thing I hear a lot of people talk about, and it really chaps my ass, um, mainly because it's completely false. Um, I hear people talk about a mirror finish and say the people that don't do a mirror finish, well, they don't do a mirror finish because it's too much work and they don't want to put the time in and they just want to get the knife done and get it out there and all that stuff. And I've heard that from, from people who are not knife makers, and I've heard that from people who are knife makers. Um, and I either am going to share some information that is not knife, you know, that, that, that apparently did not originate in knife making, because quite frankly, where I learned this trick wasn't in, wasn't, in, wasn't, uh, from a knife maker. It was a completely different industry. And the secret I learned, um, is that, you know, they, they talk about, again, they talk about how much work goes into making a mirror polish and you got to do this and go through your grits and you got to get it just right and you got to be dedicated. And that really shows that a man that cares. I'd agree. A lot of work has to go into a mirror finish. And, you know, hey, it, it, it is what it is. You can't, you can't avoid the fact that it, that it does take a level of time and a level of patience. But for anyone to make the assumption that it takes any less work to accomplish a good satin finish, it just proves the, the what, you know, it proves what you don't know. Because to be honest with you, in order to accomplish the best satin finish, you have to start off with a mirror finish. Most people think, and a lot of people do this, that in order to, you just sand it and get up to that satin finish and boom, you're done. You can do that. And you can deliver a knife and you can deliver a uh, anything, any kind of metal work, and, and, and completely do that without without any kind of problems, and nothing is wrong with that. But if you want to take it over the top, if you want to go that little extra mile, if you want to uh, uh, make the finish that much sweeter, in order to get a good satin finish, you have to start with the base of a good mirror finish. you got to polish it, you got to get it right, you got to get it looking good, you got to be able to shave in that damn blade. Once it's done, once you've got that perfect finish, then you go back, and then you put you put a, you put the satin scratches and 
uh, stuff in it. And not a lot of people do it. I don't know how many people actually know. I, I, and I'm not going to call anybody out and say that they don't know or that they're, you know, that they're doing it wrong because they're not doing it wrong. They may be doing it their way if they don't do it that way. And like I said, you know, side by side, you are, you're, you know, you're probably not going to tell one over the other. Where it will be told is down the road. Six months, six years, ten years, when you're trying to keep the blade clean, when you're trying to keep whatever it is clean. And again, this is not something that, that I learned off of a video on the internet. I learned this before the internet was even a thing. This is, this is something I learned back in the 80s, if any of you even know what the 80s are. This is something from the 1900s. You know, a lot of these people walk around and it, with this arrogant point of view, and they think they know, they think, oh, well, you know, these people that don't do this, you know, mirror finish, and they're, you know, they're just lazy. They just want to pop out a knife, and they just want to get it done. Hey, you know what? Maybe there are people out there that do that, but you, I would venture a guess that if you're spending good money on a knife, chances are the guy you're, 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 you're giving your money to, he probably knows this, and he's probably listening to the bull that's flying out of your mouth and shaking your head going, these people don't know. And that's really, really a frustrating thing. I, I just, you know, I saw that video and I just listened to the guy go on and on about how uh, lazy people who sell custom knives are that they don't want to do a mirror finish. Well, first and foremost, it's personal preference. You may not want a mirror finish. Personally, I don't always want a mirror finish. I don't like a mirror finish on a knife. Mirror But it really is frustrating. I think I think the most aggravating thing about doing any kind of craft, and whether it's uh, knife making, whether it's pottery, whether it's custom auto painting, or whether it's any of that type of stuff, it's really frustrating when people take a cursory glance at what you're doing and 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 make this you know blanket assessment or or, or assumption that what you're doing isn't as I don't want to say difficult because no, it's not always difficult. It's not about being difficult, but it's not always as as uh, in depth as it seems, you know. And I, I always said the same thing when I first got into this. I got into this not because I was trying to prove a point, not because I was, you know, trying to pass a test or see what I could do or anything like that. I got into this because a guy was doing beautiful knife work, and I just fell in love with the type of work that he was doing. You know, metal work is something that I'm definitely not a stranger to. And when I listen to and hear people talk about metal work, my ears perk up. You know, I'm in a completely different industry now, uh, completely different. So much so that when people find out what I used to do, they kind of look at me with a raised eyebrow going, what? But um, the uh, when you look at somebody that makes a knife or somebody that 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 uh, you know paints a car paints a house builds a cabinet whatever the case may be and you know you you essentially pass judgment you know you go in there you see a guy that makes a beautiful cabinet work a really good friend of mine over at Wynn Woodworks around here he makes amazing amazing uh, 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 I don't even know if it's fair to call them works of art they're just beautiful cabinetry work. He does amazing work, and um, he posts his pictures online, and it's, yeah, I look forward to watching what he's turned out next because he's got some crazy skills. And it really aggravates me when I hear people talk about, oh, I could do that, you know, I can do that, and I can do that. And, yeah, you know what? What he's doing, what I'm doing, what a body man's doing, what a mechanic's doing, what a, what a you know, a, a, a mason is doing, it may not be rocket science it may not be the most difficult thing in the world but there is an art anyone can do the task but you need to have not everyone has the artistry it takes to master the craft and i think it really gets frustrating when i watch people you know make that assumption that that this is this or anything like that I, it was the same thing you know again one of my prior lives i was a mechanic and i was a body man you know, it was really, really frustrating when customers would walk in and say, well, all you got to do is sand it and then just, you know, hit it with some paint. And yeah, you know what? You probably could do it. And, and, and even if they know what it takes to get the job done, there's just this <clears throat> infancy and experience that, that makes what they say and what they assess about what's really going on laughable. You know, everybody's a backyard mechanic. Everybody's a... a 
you know, I was the same way. I was a closet knife maker. And, and, and I still, to this day, after all the knives I've made, all the knives I've sold, and I'm not talking thousands, but for me, it's a, it's a lot. You know, I still don't call myself a knife maker. I'm still a guy who makes knives. Because I don't, again, I don't think I've earned that badge to call myself a knife maker yet. There's a lot that I'm learning. I know the process. I know the steps. I know the science behind it. I can accomplish the task. And I can smile when somebody steps up and says, wow, you just did some amazing work right there. And I can smile with pride. But I'm not so arrogant to think that there's still not a ton to learn. I don't call what this is easy. I don't call what this is simple. I don't call what this is anything other than what it is. It's another craft. Understanding it, that may be easy. But what's being done here, what I've seen some masters do here, it is not easy. It is something that takes time. You want to call it easy? I'll call this easy. I'll call any task in the world easy, simple, or whatever you want to call it after you can do it repeatedly for years on end. Outside of that, you're a novice and you're still learning. You may make 100 knives and or, or paint 100 cars or change 100 uh, uh, spark plugs on a car. And they may all go perfect. Every last one of them may go perfect. That doesn't make you a master mechanic, and that doesn't make you a master uh, painter, and it doesn't make you a master knife maker. What makes you a master knife maker is having faced the best and worst of every one of those scenarios and being and being able to get through it, being able to learn from your mistakes, realizing that every day is not a day on the job. It's a day to learn something new. Once you've put in enough time and you put in enough hours and you failed as often as you've succeeded, then you can talk about you know how how easy it is because this is not easy making a knife making five knives is easy changing a tire changing 50 tires is easy but doing it repeatedly with consistent results over and 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 over again that's hard as hell. And don't let anybody tell you different. And like I said, when it comes to the fit and finish on a knife, I think it frustrates me more than to hear people go off about how it's how the satin finish or is is the lazy man's finish. Because you know what? I'm still sitting here, I'm still polishing, and I'm still working, and I'm not even ready to begin my satin finish. I got a long way to go before I get there. And you know what? Most people that go after a mirror finish would think they were almost done. Yeah. Satin finish is such the lazy man's way. Anyway, that was my little rant. I just don't like... Uh, People making blanket assumptions about the type of work that anyone does, including myself. You know, like I said, I'm not technically I'm not a knife maker. I'm just a guy making knives. But I, I really get peeved off when I hear people tell me that what I'm doing, the satin finish, is the easy man's, the, the lazy way, and it, it's you know, <laughs> here he goes again, just trying to get take the easy way out. Nothing makes me want to jump through the computer or reach across the table and 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 bitch slap somebody than to have them than to listen to them talk out their ass about the level of work that I put into this. I got a long way to go. I still got to get this thing on the buffing wheel. I still got to run through all the compounds. I still got to run through everything it's going to take to get this thing mirror finished before I'm ready to then put on the final finish. Everyone's a Monday morning quarterback. I don't know. Sorry about that little rant, guys. I'm just sitting here trying to get this knife done, get this stuff done, and I'm thinking about how, you know, I had to sit there and listen to the guy talking about how this is the lazy way. The lazy way. Give me a break. The lazy way. There's nothing lazy about this. There's nothing lazy about anything that goes into this. Nothing pisses me off more than, more than an inexperienced know-it-all. I don't care what you know, what you've seen, what you've watched, what you've read, what you've been taught. I don't give two shits about any of that stuff. And I will say this until I'm blue in the face. I would rather have experience than intelligence any day of the week. Because you can't learn experience. 
That has to come with time. Can't read it in a book. Can't watch it on a video. Can't learn it in a class. Can't get it from a teacher. Be wary of any man who's an overnight expert. Hold oh, easy. Yeah, can you tell that pissed me off just a little bit? Nothing lazy about this process. There's nothing. This is not a shortcut. This is not an easy way out. I'm going through every single step that it takes to give this thing a mirror, mirror polish. And when I'm done, I can stop. But I'm not going to because I want to take it a step further. I want to add a satin finish. I'll be here polishing, taking the easy way out for a couple of more hours. But uh, anyway, guys, this thing is almost done. I'm going to be putting the handle on soon. Very soon, I hope. Ready to get this thing out. And uh, hopefully you stick around and watch that. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to upload this video or cut right to it, but we'll figure it out. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to stick around in the next video. We're going to pop the handle on this thing, shape it up, and get it done. And uh, we're going to introduce the Celtic Bushcrafter, the Primal Edition. Thanks a lot. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pop on over to the website, PrimalLegendLeatherworks.com. Check out some of the new products we got going on over there. Sign up for the adventure blog. All the links to that are going to be at the end of the video, right on the screen. You can click right on the screen or down in the description below if you're mobile. And uh, you guys, thanks for everything. Have a great day.